you to our musicians for that opening song as we begin our worship today for Sunday, August 30th. I am Pastor Trish Reedstrom at Messiah Lutheran in North Mankato, Minnesota, and I welcome you to worship with us on this day. Our theme for this morning is uh, finishing up a theme we've been working on for the last few weeks in the month of August, and we are going to be uh, talking about people today. It's the fifth of five themes that we have had for the month. We begin with poverty, planet, political corruption, peace, and today we will talk about people. Our theme text for today will be Galatians chapter 3 verses 26 through 28. Just a couple of other announcements as we begin this morning for you. If you are joining us online at other times and places, just want to let you know about a couple of things. The first is if you join me uh, on in the evenings for Facebook Live, I do a short devotion on about 6 p.m. And I've been doing it five days a week. Beginning this week, we will be moving that to three days a week as we also begin our fall programming here at Messiah. So on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, you can find 
a short devotion on Facebook, 6 p.m. or shortly thereafter. And we've been working our way through the book of Psalms. You are welcome to join us at any time. And then just to let you know as well, we are going to continue to worship outside here at Messiah on Sunday mornings. We are worshiping at 8.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. out on our lawn. We also do Facebook Live at 8.30 a.m. and have a rain uh, backup plan as well, which this pre-recorded service is a part of that. And so that will continue to be our practice as long as the weather holds. If you would like any more information about what's happening here at Messiah or would like to be put on our email list or receive our newsletter or anything, please just contact the church office. But again, welcome to worship. And I invite you to join me as we continue in prayer. God of heaven and earth, you created the one human family and endowed each person with great dignity. Today we gather as men and women, young and old, people whose kin have come from near and far, knowing that in our differences we are all one. As we gather, we pray for opportunity and courage to see your image in each other. Fill our hearts with love for you and our neighbor. Harness that love that we may work with you to see one another not as superior or inferior, but as equal. Give us your grace that we might join together to eliminate injustice in our hearts, our relationships, our community, our social and civil institutions. Help us to heal this land from its particular sin of racial injustice. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives with you and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. I invite, if there's any children who are watching this, to just uh, grab a little bit of water. Later on today, you are going to hear me talk a little bit more about baptism. And it's always a good thing to remember our baptism. And water is the one easy element that we have in our world that can always remind us of water. So whether we have bathed in it, taken a drink lately, uh, Played in it, gone swimming, or uh, uh, just, just thinking about a, a family that was here earlier this week helping to weed in the gardens and they were spraying each other with the garden hose. Uh, no matter how we are playing, using, drinking, cleansing, all the different ways that we use water, one of the important ways we use water is to remember our baptism. Because in our baptism, of course, we were washed in the waters. And we were claimed, called, and claimed. We talk about being adopted into the family of God through our baptism. It's really a public affirmation of something that happens at creation in which God calls us and claims us and says, you are mine. I love you. And I promise to love you always and be with you forever. And so we live out that promise, being called a child of God in our baptism. So today I invite you to grab a little bit of water, perhaps make the sign of the cross on yourself, perhaps you want to fling that water and uh, get your family members wet and remind them as you do that you're a child of God, you are a child of God, you are a child of God, and that comes with all of God's love and grace and promise. So go splash in some water and remind yourself and others you are indeed a child of God. Our first reading for today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, burden in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly, do not claim to be wiser than you are, do not repay anyone evil for evil. 
but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. And in this passage, we have heard a number of ideas, principles, guidelines for living peaceably with one another and living in the way that God would will for us. And our second reading today also comes from a letter of Paul's. This time it's written to uh, the Galatians, and it is the third chapter, verses 26 through 28. You are all God's children through faith in Christ Jesus. All of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. Nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord, and we turn now to song. As we heard in Galatians, we are all God's children through faith in Jesus. We're 
in our baptism, we were we put on the Messiah as surely as we put on our clothes before we leave the house in the mornings. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no male and female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. In these few verses, Paul writes that as children of God, ethnicity, class, and gender no longer matter. Over the last four or five weeks, we have looked at four other major issues that have affected our world or are affecting our world today, poverty, planet, political corruption, and peace. In each of these difficulties, we are faced with a constant push to carefully divide ourselves into two camps, us and them. And in every situation, the us versus them camps are divided along ethnic, class, and or gender lines. And in every situation where we divide ourselves into us versus them, we find it harder to reduce poverty, care for the planet, erase political corruption, or find peace. Instead, we find increased argument, anger, policy paralysis, identity wars, violence, and hatred. Today, our issue is us, people, God's people. And as children of God, it is time for all of us to reject the distinctions of ethnicity, class, and gender, and instead to live out the words of an ancient and forgotten Christian creed that there is no longer Jew or Greek, white or black, citizen or immigrant. There is no longer slave or free, rich or poor, suburban or rural. There is no longer male and female, gay and straight. There is only I'm greatly informed in my preaching today by a book that I recently came across by Stephen J. Patterson. It's called The Forgotten Creed. In it, Patterson argues what many other biblical scholars also believe, that these words that are found in verses 26 through 28 of the third chapter of Galatians, these words may not be Paul's original words at all, but instead they probably came from an early Christian baptismal creed. This creed wasn't about theology, but it was about identity. And it wasn't versus them. Instead, it was an identity that said, we are all one. And by the way, to say one in Christ is probably Paul's adaptation. The original Christian creed likely and simply said, we are all one. What would happen if we truly believed these words? What would happen if we tried to live out this creed with an understanding that it is indeed the truth for which we are all desperately longing? What long-held lies would we need to dis? What uncomfortable truths would we need to begin to grapple with? How would it change what we say and how we act toward our neighbors, our friends, our enemies, our families, ourselves, and God? I want to be able to tell you so much more about what I have learned about these verses, about how the ancient world would have interpreted them versus how we interpret them today and about how over the centuries the church first lifted up their truth, but later discarded them for the reasons that we continue to confront in our world today. I am giving to those who are coming to worship a handout with some of the closing paragraphs of Patterson's book, and we will try to make that available online as well, because I feel like they are so important to share. I hope if I am able to give those to you online that you will read them carefully and perhaps there will be opportunity as well 
for more conversation about these verses and about this forgotten Christian creed. But here's what I do want to tell you in this moment for today, and I hope that you will listen carefully. As I have wrestled with all of these important topics, this month of August, I have come to understand and believe that these words from Paul's letter to the Galatians are, are a truth that we must cling to and live out as if our lives depended on them. Because our lives do depend on them. We must do whatever is in our power to stop living in us versus them camps and to begin living into the identity that we have been called to by God through baptism in Christ Jesus. We are all one. We are all one in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thanks be to God for that truth. Let us continue with prayers at this time and your response to the words, Lord in your mercy can be, hear our prayer. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of relationships, we know we are all one in Christ Jesus. Help us to live out this creed every moment of our lives in all that we do. Keep us loving you and loving neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and the most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I invite I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with all of you today. And if you are watching this with others, I invite you to take a moment and share God's peace with one another. And then I invite you to join me as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And the Lord look upon you and give you peace. Amen. 
We will end our worship this morning with one more musical piece. And we pray, I pray, that you too will go in peace and serve the Lord today and every day. Amen. <laughs>